welcome back to Buzz About Cricket. Andy Buzzer here with a video on tips about playing spin. Uh, I went up to Devon Cricket at X University, jumped on the Merlin machine and basically just went through a few fundamental ideas of how I would actually play spin, uh, put a short video together and this is the sort of stuff that I will be teaching and have taught uh, a lot of players uh, throughout the summer. Uh, basically with a drier summer that we've had the ball has been turning more, uh, inspired completely behind the Indian and England Test match and the recent county championship games around the local area. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people getting out and playing spin in different ways. So basically I've broken four fundamental things down that I feel each batter should be having in their armoury when they're going to the crease playing spin. Let's see how I get on. So, this is the Merlin by Bowler, Bowler Machine, uh, Spin Machine. This is what we use teaching spin. We've, we've used it throughout the summer and we're using it a lot over the winter. Uh, throughout the, the video, I kind of keep it on 46 miles per hour leg spin as a stop ball, uh, but it does have gentle variations put in place, so it's not too predictable. So, tip number one getting forward. Uh, very fundamental, very basic, but it's ensuring we're not overstriding but making sure we are well away from that crease and getting our head over the line of the ball, waiting for the ball to come to us so we can play it down and ensuring our head at contact is over the ball. A lot of players tend to plant their foot down the wicket, down the pitch and then reach and play around for the ball with their hands. What I would suggest is actually working your head and your feet in line with the ball. So regardless of where the ball is going, we're always getting in a position where we're, we've got a nice base, a good balance, and again, our head is over the point at contact. What we don't want to see is your foot being put in one place, the ball deviating and moving in the air and catching the outside edge because we're trying to be too cute and play with it. So if tip number one was getting forward, I don't think you need to be a rocket scientist to figure out tip number two is simply getting back. Now, I don't see enough players utilising this form of playing spin. Even if the pitch isn't as true, you can still get back in your crease as long as you're watching it very carefully. When I say get back, I really do mean getting all the way back. By doing so, it's going to give you additional time to play. You should be able to play in front of square, behind square, and it will put a spinner's length off. Realistically though, this cannot be achieved if we're hanging around on the crease, just pushing on the way back. If you look at this movement, I'm going to go right in slow motion. Although I've got my forward press when I move back, I'm getting back to the crease, playing the ball under my eyes, head over it, and that way it's given me additional time to actually play the ball. So, tip number three. Uh, for me, this is probably the most effective way and what I do the most, and that's going out and physically sweeping the ball. Now, in terms of this shot, a lot of people are scared because if they miss it, you potentially could be out LBW. What I like about it and why I think it's such a great option and why I think everyone should be practicing this shot is because you can do it to, you can hit the ball in so many different areas regardless of what the bowler is trying to do. It's a captain's nightmare and it forces the bowler to change their line, change their length and also the pace at which they're trying to bowl. If we slow the movement down, it is all about keeping your head level, your hands in front of the pads and at contact over the ball. My weight will always be going at the ball, not squatting down, so not just collapsing your back leg. Head going towards the ball, hands in contact in front of the front pad, head nice and level. If our head isn't level and we start trying to follow the ball, our entire upper body starts to rotate. When we do that, the point of contact may not be what the desired one. In this example, I get a top edge, the ball's probably gone squarer than I thought, potentially caught deep, uh, deep square leg. If, uh, if we look at this example, I plant the foot and try and hit the ball too hard. At that point, I've missed it, I'm bang in front, and I'm a massive LBW candidate. Now, tip number four. This is something that, again, we should be practicing all the time, advancing down the track.
So when we look at advancing down the track or running down the track, uh, the biggest thing that I teach is ensuring that our eyes are level and our head is nice and still. Uh, that way we can follow the ball and see it all the way and ensure we actually get to the pitch of the delivery. If we don't get to the pitch of the delivery, we can always back out of the shot and play the ball on its merit rather than giving our wicket away by trying to overhitting and losing shape. I always would suggest taking a larger first stride that's going to allow us to then get into a position to hit from a solid base and our contact point is over the ball. Recapping, whether we're getting forward or getting back, we've got to get off the crease. Uh, our head over the ball and we're trying to play the ball as late as we possibly can, therefore it's going down. When we are getting back, we're going to get right back in that crease, giving ourselves as much time to play the ball. Sweeping, our weight must be going forward. Again, our eyes level and therefore we can hit the ball with our hands out fully extended. Again, when it comes to the advancing down the track, we are looking at keeping our eyes level, not trying to over hit the ball and creating a larger stride to therefore get a base and make a better contact with the ball. So there you have it guys, they are my four fundamental key points that I feel every batter should be thinking about uh, before they're getting to the crease. Realistically, I see so many batters get out to slower bowlers and spin bowlers simply because they don't have a plan. Having an idea of what you want to do and how you're going to achieve your runs is probably the biggest way of actually psychologically preparing yourself for a big innings. If you're going to the crease with just that real if it's in the arc, it's out the park sort of thing. It just doesn't fly at a higher level anymore. You know, with the talent that is going around with spin bowling, with the variations of, of pace and actually the ability to move the ball more, we as batters have to go out there with a clear objective of where I'm going to score my singles, where I'm going to get my twos, my threes, and where my boundaries are going to come from. Guys, if you like the video, like it, please share, follow, subscribe, the whole lot. I'm Andy Buzzer. That's been Buzz About Cricket. Catch you next time. Cheers.